and welcome to Relax, Relate with Renfro. Today we are here to talk to our guest, Angela Emery, about personal fitness and the battle of the sexes. But before we do that, I want to give you a health tip for the day. And the health tip is about exercise. Exercising allows you to improve your overall health, reduces your self-esteem, um, increases your self-esteem, reduces depression and anxiety. So again, Miss Emery, how are you today? I am great, Mr. Renfro. How are you doing today? I'm not doing as fit as you are, but <laughs> I'm going to make it through. So tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you been doing personal fitness? Um, I started fitness almost right out of high school. Fell in love with it when I became a, a front desk employee. And it's been about 15 years now, and I absolutely love it. Okay. And where do you do your personal fitness training at? Right now, I'm in Sandy Springs and in Buckhead. Uh, but I mainly train out of my clients' homes and also out of aerobics studios. I do aerobics classes also. Okay, now I understand that one of the problems that you're running across is that you don't get enough male uh, clients. Can you tell me why you think that might be? What is the problem with uh, a female trying to train a male in personal fitness? There's a number of reasons why that may be the issue. I mean, number one, I do look good. If I do say yes, so myself. Do. Okay. And you know, let's just take the sex out, you know, the things out of it. But men, you know, no, y'all do. It's a, are, fact. it's a fact. You yes. know, if we look good and you can't really concentrate with, you know, if I'm in leggings. Um, okay. <laughs> but Flip the, side works too, though. Yes, it does. Okay. It does because sometimes, yeah. yeah. But uh, at the same time, though, taking the silliness out of it, sure. um, a lot of times men feel that a female, when they're training them, may not be able to get the weight or lift the weight off of them while they're training. Okay. So let's say that I'm training a male mm -hmm. and I'm training him on a bench press. If okay. he's benching 200, 300 pounds, how could she, little old me, yes. get the weight off of her, get the weight off of him if he gets in trouble? That would be a concern. And that would be a concern because you don't want the weight to fall on you. Right. Um, again, being in the industry for 15 years, one, I would never put my client under weight that I could not get him out of okay. from under. First of all, and second of all, most times I'm able to estimate what, has to, what is needed. Okay. So in lifting the weight, especially in the bench press, what has to happen, I only need to give that much little push to get the weight off of him and rack it back up. It's not that much strength that I need to give you in order to push the weight off of you. I take it because he's also applying some of his He's strength also applying that. straight. And then on that last <laughs> rep, you're pushing as much as you can. So I'm only need to give you maybe five or 10 more pounds huh. of push to get the weight off. To get the weight off. So tell me, uh, you have a boyfriend. Yes. How does he feel about you working with men, particularly in a private setting? Because like you say, you go to the home sometimes. What, how do you deal with that? He knows I'm making money. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I always tend to introduce my clients to my boyfriend okay. and vice versa. So that takes all that energy out of that. I'm very clear on making sure that people know who people are. I have a man. I'm here for a reason. I'm here to get you fit. And that's the only reason why I'm here. So I don't deal with the energies of, you know, those sexual in the endos and I stay pretty clean and pretty clear when I'm, when I'm training someone. Okay. That way that energy never comes up in the first place. Having talked to some men trying to get your clientele, mm -hmm. what have been some of the challenges that you've had to face in terms of just questioning your ability to train them? Do I know what to do? Um, <laughs> um, my knowledge especially or I don't know how to lift weights or what have you. Well, you seem pretty fit as it is, so I would, that would be my first clue. You kind of know what you're doing. <laughs> I do thoroughly, and thank you, I do thoroughly enjoy, um, and my clients will be able to attest to this, okay. when a gentleman comes to my classes, especially my aerobics classes, thinking that it's a girl's class, and halfway through the class, the girls are looking at him going, okay, uh, let's go. And, you know, but they think it's just a regular, you know, lifting weights class or what have you. So... Okay. So you're saying that when you're doing the, the fitness, it's more than just lifting weights? Yes. Because I, personally, I've never had a personal trainer. Okay. But you know, I've worked out a little bit. So what else does it in, entail besides just lifting weights? Cardiovascular, uh, body functions. So just, you know, body weight exercises. I find a lot of gentlemen, especially, are less they just keep doing a rep, so you're just pumping iron one, two, right. three, four. And that's what we're used to, and that's what a lot of gentlemen are used to. Okay. But taking the weight slower or faster or holding the weight, is it takes a completely different workout than what you were doing beforehand. Okay. 
How can our uh, viewers get in touch with you? Um, my name is Angela Emery. Uh, you can reach me at SculptDiva, www.sculptdiva.com, or you can just find me on my hashtag, which is Naked Dumbbells. Spell Sculpt again. S-C-U-L-P-T. Okay. Diva, D-I-V-A. Okay. We're going to take a break for a moment, and we'll be right back with Battle of the Sexes and our personal trainer, Miss Emery. Welcome back to Relax, Relate with Renfro. We're discussing personal fitness and battle of the sexes with our guest, Angela Emery. Angela, thanks again for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. We were discussing earlier, if you missed, uh, the challenges that you face when you're trying to enroll male clientele. Primarily it's because of your gender, because of your size and your build, and a lot of men don't feel that you're able to handle the weight that's necessary for them to bulk up. So let me ask you this question. What do you think that you do personally that is preventing you from eliciting and getting more male clientele? Well, first of all, it may be more of my location than anything else. Right now I'm training out of homes, like I mentioned before. Okay. So without the excess pounds of weight, it's very challenging to give a male a, different, a, a challenging workout. Okay. However, there is a caveat to that. I still am able to give a challenging workout just in the percept perceptive mm -hmm. uh, it's it's perceived it's, okay. it's, okay. <laughs> it's perceived as though you're not even able to tone up and bulk up without weight. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What is the difference between toning up and bulking up? Good question. A lot of people ask me this question. Um, bulking up, especially in the male perception sure. is to build muscle. So it's to go from I don't, uh, someone who's really thin to, let's say, the rock. That's a lot of bulk. That's, That's a, lot a lot of, of mass. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, so shaping up would be like, I guess, your Channing Tatum or your Tyrese Gilford. It's just a sh you still have the same body shape, mm -hmm. but you're shaping the muscles around you. The, the muscles are shaped. They're not bulked. They're not built on. And you're not building the muscles as much. Okay. So, again, and I asked, what are you doing personally? Now, you told me about your location. But you as a person, do you find that maybe you have a, a difficulty the way you approach the uh, male in terms of trying to elicit them to get you to, to hire you for, as a personal trainer? I don't feel as though as that. Like I said, it's okay. about to feel more the location. Okay. Um, a lot of things may be with, you know, how I may dress. Okay. Again, it might be a quote turn on for the male. You might be able to not be able to focus as much. Uh, I think also, and especially with one of my clients, I like I mentioned before, I introduced or try to mention my boyfriend whenever I'm trying when I'm, whenever I'm training a client. Okay. Um, I introduced my one of my clients had me introduced to his wife, and that way she knew who I was. I knew who he he was. Oh, wow. She was. Excuse sure. me. Sure. And then that way it took the necessary. She knew what was going on and what have you. Okay. So when you're doing your personal fitness with a male, do you tend to have your boyfriend with you or does the guy have his wife or girlfriend around or is it just a one-on-one? -on -one kind Most of times it's a one-on-one -on -one session and that's why I try to, let the less, uh, try to let the partners know what's going on. I have complete honesty. Um, even with my last client who was in Decatur, a couple of months ago, I already knew the family, so they already knew me and already knew them, so there was no really in the introductions or what have you. But I think it's just safer just to take the sexuality out of it because we are working in close proximity of each other. Okay. We are, you know, tight. You're, I'm, squat, I'm squatting with the person. I'm over the person's face. Just the location of some of the positions are, can be very sensual in that manner. It's an intimate behavior. Exactly. Yeah. So we don't want anything to happen with that. Yeah, that's true. Do you find it difficult because one of the things that occur between men and women is communication. And there's a lot of misunderstanding, miscommunication. Do you have a problem with that when you're trying to you know, teach or train a male? Not in the work arena, no. I tend to be able to 
beat up a man just as much as I can beat up a woman <laughs> just as easily. Okay. Sometimes I can beat up the men better. They just, you got men coming to classes or coming to gyms thinking they can do this and do that and I make, make a left turn instead of a right. Okay. Like I said, taking the weight slower or making them hold the weight or what have you that challenges them, challenges the muscle, challenges the man, takes that ego and pride out a lot sooner okay. than they would like. See, I would think that challenging the guy's ego would cause him to resist getting some training from a female. I have run into that also. Okay. Um, I do take personal enjoyment in, um, See? Okay. <laughs> in, but it's all in the point of working out though. I'm not doing that to make you feel less than anything, but if you really want a good workout, one of my cl uh, clients a while back said he only trained with females because he's able to get that challenge um, in a way that he feels that he's not able to get with with a man. Okay. I think one of the assets that you might bring to the table is that a lot of men who have been raised by females in female homes receive information better from females than they do other males because mm -hmm. it's a relating type of situation. So that might be a good way to look at it sometimes. Right. Okay, we're going to take another break and we'll be back. And when we come back, we're going to ask our audience a couple of questions and see how they feel about the personal fitness and battle of the sexes. Thank you. You're welcome. talk about the difference between the male and female brain. Let's start from the beginning. When the brain is being developed while in utero, what occurs is that the left side of the brain for males is developed first. The right side of the brain is developed in females first. Well, females brain, uh, the, the brain, the right side of the brain, shoots neurons to the left side of the brain because this allows them to be able to interact with both sides of the brain at the same time when they're born. However, because the right side of the brain is being developed, mm, I said that wrong, let me go backwards again, okay. So the left side of the brain develops the neurons. So what happens is that when guys are being born, they're still in utero, their brains are shooting off the connective tissue to the right side. Nothing being on the right side, it comes back to the left side. Therefore, we have more brain connections on the left side of the brain, which deal with logical thinking and tasks, than the right side. When girls' left side of brain develops, now they're shooting the neurons over to the right side of the brain, and they have more connections to the right and left side of the brain. That being said, that allows them to do the task a lot better than men do in many areas. However, because men are more logically orientated, when we begin to engage in activities, women tend not to understand why we do what we do. A perfect example would be children, uh, little boys, touch things. Men, men are tactile. We learn by touching, seeing, feeling. Women tend to be more aesthetic and they deal with colors and sound and shapes. The primary thing for this is that these are some natural ways that go way back to caveman days and dealing with survival. Men go out into the woods or the jungle, depending on where they were. They have to hunt, which is why men tend to be, and I don't want to get into the controversy of women saying they're just as good, but men tend to be better at tying distance and speed and you can see that when you watch the cars driving on the expressway i get that all the time women however stayed at home and watched the children cooked and we're talking about way back in caveman days but nothing has changed in all these millions of years but they had to be more acute to watching the children and dealing with safety they also had to deal with safety by being more communal and communicating with the other women in the tribe or the camp or wherever their uh, location was that they lived. But at the same time, guys, this is what you might miss. Because of this attribute, women have a keener sense of smell, a, keener, a different way of looking at an object. A perfect example would be, I run across this myself all the time, 
I go in the refrigerator, I'm looking for something, I got my head stuck in there, I don't see it. I ask my wife, I tell her, I don't see it. She comes in, grabs it just like that. What I discovered was, if I stand back as if I were hunting, I can see it a lot quicker. Women, on the other hand, if they stand back, they're not gonna see it as fast. They would have the same problem I do if I stuck my head in there. But this is just how we're naturally built. So this is just to give you some idea of how men and women are built differently. But we also think and see situations differently as well. Because women are more emotional than men are, they tend to make a lot of decisions based upon emotion. And not all decisions based on emotion are good decisions. And the flip side is true. A lot of men make decisions based on logic, and they're not always good either. But the point I'm trying to get across here is to keep in mind both aspects play, play a big part when you're starting to deal with your relationships and dealing with your children. You have to be cognizant that these two factors are always playing a part and that you have to be aware of them if you're trying to raise a child or have a healthy relationship. Therefore, you're not so quick to beat up the guy because he didn't see it your way, because he wouldn't ask for directions while he's driving, because, hey, we just got to solve the problem ourselves. And that's kind of how it works out. When the mother says, I know he's upset, talking about their son. He came home from school. He won't talk. He went to his room. I asked him what's wrong. He won't say anything. He says nothing, but I know there's something wrong. I'm going to grant you. You're probably correct with your perception. However, you have to understand male thinking, DNA-wise, we must solve the problem some way before we're able to share that information. Now, the solution may not be correct, may not work, but that doesn't matter. It just matters that we have come up with the solution ourselves because that's how we operate. Women, on the flip side, they tend to share their problems with other females to come up with a solution, and that works for them. So the idea, again, is just to understand that there's a two different ways of thinking and solving the same problem. Be aware of it, be patient, and be understanding. And you'll get a lot more mileage out of your relationship with your partner or your child, and you're able to teach your, your female, obviously female girl, daughters, how to understand the behavior with their brother and with their father. Thank you. Welcome back to Relax, Relate with Renfro. We're discussing personal fitness with our guest, Angela Emery, who is a certified personal fitness trainer. If you turned in late, then you missed the fact that she discussed how she had difficulty dealing with some of the male clients who don't believe that she's qualified to manage the weight and training that she can provide them. So, Angela, uh, tell us again, real quick, why you're able to deal with males in this particular arena. Because looking at your form, you obviously seem to be fit. You have an intoxicating flavor about yourself and you've got a nice body. I would think that some men might feel intimidated, particularly if their wives or girlfriends had a look at you. Then go get somebody else. <laughs> Stay fat. I don't care. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Most times I just take them through a class. I use, I use my art. So most times I just take them through a session, take them through a really quick workout. If I see them doing something incorrectly or they've been doing the same routine, a lot of times I, I'm living in a gym. So I see people do the same routine day in, day out. And I'll just go up to them, joke around, hey, you know, what's up? Let me do this, this, you know, let's do this, this, and this. And I make them do push-ups, just 20 push-ups slower or faster or making them hold them will put a lot of difference within your workout that they're not used to do, having. Okay, so we're going to take a couple of questions from our audience. Sir, seems how you're the only male here and we're talking about males. <laughs> I do thoroughly, thank you, I do thoroughly enjoy, um, and my clients will be able to attest to this, when a gentleman comes to my classes, especially my aerobics classes, thinking that it's a girl's class, and halfway through the class the girls are looking at him going, okay, uh, let's go. And, you know, but they think it's just a regular, you know, lifting weights class or what have you. So, so um, you're saying that when you're doing the, the fitness, it's more than just lifting weights. Yes. Because that person you said that your gym is typically in the person's home. Well, if a guy's uh, goal is to bulk up and build mass, and typically we think of that by lifting a lot of hefty, heavy weights, how is it 
that we're able to do so at home when we don't have the equipment in order to lift heavy weights? How do you work that out? A lot of gentlemen run into that problem because they don't want to buy a gym membership or it might not be in their budget. What I typically do is maybe a 30-minute program where we do a HIT workout high intensity interval training workout. What that is, is 30, sec 30 seconds we're doing something completely hard, going hard for 30 seconds, resting for 10 and then keep moving. 30, 30 second interval, 10 seconds off. With that interval, you're able to tone, your body's able to change, and also you're able to see the results that you want to see really quickly. Okay, excellent question. Yeah, I've got yes. a quick question for you, Angela. Why is it that you think that men don't like to come into the aerobics classes? I mean, it's a great workout, but most men just typically shy away from that. Why do you think that is? One, it might be ego and pride. I, I know they say they don't have it, but, you know, in their gut, they don't want to be pushed up out. One. No, no we no. don't have any ego. Of course not. You don't have an ego. Mm -mm. Mm. Very humble. Um, but second, I do believe that it's a, different, it's a completely different workout. Um, in the aerobics class, we're usually to the beat of music. We're to the beat of something that's constantly going. In the weight room, they can do their reps, 12 reps, take a break for two minutes, talk to their friends, chat, and do the next set two minutes later. Um, but when I come into an aerobics room, you're being led by someone else. You're not doing it yourself, one. And also, two, you might not know what's coming up and it's, it's constantly moving. So that intensity of cardio and also not knowing what's coming up takes, a, takes the mind out of the game. That kind of what I was thinking about when I see the aerobics class, I look at it, oh no, I'm not doing that. Because to me, it seems that it's, it's dealing more with cardiovascular and speed, that's one. The other one is, I'm not in charge of it. I can't work <laughs> at my own pace. Right. So that makes me want to back off. And that kind of gets into that male-female way of thinking. Women don't mind having a group activity. Men tend to want to be one-on-one. -on -one. So I can see why that might be an issue to what you're asking. So. I typically enjoy the, you know, when the male comes, they do enjoy my classes. And I let people work at their own place for the most part, especially in my boot camp classes. But I will say that it is a good strength, way to strengthen your muscles. Okay, excellent. Yes. Well, Angela, I have a two-part question. Okay. First, have you had any um, long-term male customers before? And have you ever thought about having a couples program for people who or women who have issues? I would love to have a couples program. Hold on, Mark. For women who have issues with what? <laughs> that they're getting, that their husband's getting a training from the female? I mean... I'm okay, just asking for clarity. Is that, is that it? With okay. Right. <laughs> just want to be clear. <laughs> Well, I would love to have a, a partner workout program. I've actually been thinking about it and working on that program because working out together would develop the sex, would also develop the relationship also. And as you get fitter, you get more turned on and that betters the relationship already. I have had male clients. Uh, my longest male client, longest term male client was about five years. Um, and he completely enjoyed the workouts. He was always challenged, what have you. He just enjoy having a personal trainer and so he was able to afford it and he we went till he moved to another state so did he bulk up or did he just tone he was losing weight oh, so okay. he had a lot of weight to lose and he did lose his weight and reach his goal okay. so that was uh, his overall goal was to lose weight excellent excellent so uh so i'm glad you were able to come on the show today i know you have a very busy schedule I would like you to give our audience one more uh, opportunity to know how to get in touch with you. Okay. Um, you can just Google me at hashtag Naked Dumbbells, or if you can go to my website, which is www.sculptdiva, S-C-U-L-P-T-D-I-V-A.com. Thank you for showing up. I Thank you. It. Thank you for having Enjoy me. Enjoy the conversation. Thank you. So I'm going to end this show with... Uh, a statement that I want everybody to keep in mind, particularly those who are overweight. And you say to yourself every day, I am protected by divine love. I am always safe and secure. I am safe. Good night, everyone, and enjoy being peace. Live free. <laughs>